Hey there, beloved saints. I am doing this for um, conservative Christian. Uh, our sister was wondering about the verse about um, in Galatians where it says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust thereof. And to me, this is, I can see why people would teach that this is something we do. Like we must crucify our flesh. But what I have found is when you put it in our hands, it's like you're saying, well, if you're really saved, then that means you're crucifying your flesh and it means you won't sin. And then you're looking to yourself for confirmation. I think this is a statement of fact about our identity and what was done on Calvary. Um, the only way I have seen uh, any growth or victory over um, simple things personally uh, is when I am aware of who Jesus says I am in him, not when I'm striving and think God's mad at me or I'm trying to earn favor or something like that. Um, but when I acknowledge that I'm his, he purchased me, he, he died to pay my sin debt and that we're saved unto good works and that it's God's will that we be conformed into his image more and more. As Paul was saying, even though, you know, we're still in this fallen flesh and he's not perfect that he's going to strive for the prize of the high calling of God and keep the things that are in front of him there instead of looking beyond himself to the past, right? He's going to look forward and and keep growing and learning and maturing, right? Getting better and better because he had not yet reached perfection, nor would he. He wanted to see the resurrection power now in his life, right? So I think this is more of a statement of fact um, that Christians, when we trust at Christ, because Paul makes it clear that we died with Jesus, um, that the flesh was crucified. And so if the flesh was crucified because it's a dead man, then the affections and the lust of that flesh were also crucified. And so they, they shouldn't be given power to rule you. So you should walk in the true identity, the spirit, the seat of Christ that's in you should be the one guiding and leading you. You shouldn't be pulled around by some dead guy getting you to do things that you know are not who you truly are in Christ. Now, um, it's sad that on both camps, we're accused of promoting sin on one hand, which not at all. I believe we need to be saved it has nothing to do with us. It's all what Jesus did on Calvary. But our purpose here is to live for the Lord, to present our bodies a living sacrifice, uh, which is our reasonable service. We're saved unto good works. We're supposed to mature and become better and better Christians. We're not saved by that purpose but it's our purpose. And if we're not doing that, we're not serving the purpose. Otherwise, why don't you just take us home, right? I mean, if we have nothing here to do. So, and that is for a testimony to encourage and uplift others so that they can come to know God too. It's not to earn anything. So when I see this verse, to me, it reminds me of these verses. Romans 6, look at this one. All right, first of all, I'll read the Galatians 5 verse again, okay? Um, I'm really sad because I care for this sister, and it was troubling her because she was seeing it like, well, how do I do that? Well, you, you don't. <laughs> you know, Paul says, I die daily. Well, that first has to come from the knowledge that he already did die, right? So to me, this is the fact that those of us that are Christ have crucified the flesh. The flesh was crucified. So we shouldn't let it rule us. That's all. So when it says, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Right after it says, if we live in the spirit, 
let us also walk in the Spirit. And those of us that have trusted Christ, we have the Spirit. So walk in the Spirit. He'll never lead you wrong, right? He'll never lead you to fulfill the lust of your flesh. Uh, I, I saw something interesting. I was going to do something called divine math. 50% equals zero. Because if you if you try to make it half Jesus and half you, it's zero. You, you, you get none of Jesus. It's either all him or none of him. There is no part him, part you. Do you understand? So when we see these things, we, we have to look at them. And it makes me a little sad that it's been taught. Like I looked it up just to see what, just to see if they were, everybody was teaching it. And most of them were saying, yeah, yeah, that's something a Christian does. That, that verse is saying, if you're really Christ, you will crucify the flesh. And it goes on to tell you how. Well, I, I, I believe it's already been crucified. And the point of that verse is to tell you that so that you can walk in that truth and then you don't have to do nothing. You just acknowledge that the flesh was crucified. Hmm, that guy's dead. And so I'm in the spirit. Let me walk in it. Right. It empowers you to know who you are in Christ. I, I, I think so. So let me show you some verses that support why I believe that. Okay. Because I've seen over there, this is something that you do, that the believer does. I don't think so. I think it's something that was already done. It's a statement of fact. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh because it was crucified. Romans 6, 6. Knowing this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. I don't think that sounds like I'm doing it. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. You see? See how that works? When you acknowledge that you were crucified with Jesus, when you trusted him, it was like you were on that cross. That guy's dead. This body is going to go to the ground. It does not inherit the kingdom. It should not rule you. The real you is the new man. And he's led by the spirit. So walk in the spirit. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust thereof. Right? The old man's crucified, right? So am I doing that? Mm -mm. So if the old man's crucified, then the flesh was crucified. Am I right? With the affections and lust thereof, right? He didn't leave the affections and lust thereof with us, but the flesh was crucified. No, the flesh was crucified. Because the old man was crucified. Our old man is crucified with him. Why? That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. So this body is going to die. It does not inherit the kingdom. That doesn't mean we uh, give in to it. We're supposed to not even acknowledge that flesh is who we are. Because it's not who we are. We get a whole new glorified body. We're a new creature. But whom he justified, he also glorified. So one day we will have that body. But for now, it's a struggle because it wars against the spirit. We know that. Let's look. Uh, I think there's another verse I had pulled up in Galatians 2, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yep. 220, another one about crucifying the flesh. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified with Christ. Is that something he did? No. It's a statement of fact about your identity. Once you have trusted Christ, you were crucified with him. Now, because you're crucified, uh, that the old you died. Nevertheless, I live. I'm talking to you right now, right? But really, it's not I. It's Christ liveth in me. You see? So I should be living with the prompting of the Holy Spirit, living in a way that Jesus would react and live, right? This guy over here is dead. If we acknowledge he's dead, we won't feed into what he wants so much. So I uh, encourage 
Oh, and on the other end, we've got free grace people like ourselves that are also accusing us of now being legalist. It is not a legalist to say that as a Christian, once you've trusted Christ, we're supposed to reckon our flesh dead. The old man died. And our purpose is we're saved unto good works. And that we should strive to walk in the resurrection power of Jesus with new life and new purpose leaving the things behind the, of the past that that's this isn't to put pressure on you it's to tell you these things where we mess up and we fail we're not focusing on them these are going to fall off eventually if you keep your eye on jesus it's going to re be revealed to you that's not who you are this is just some mess left over from your flesh we're going to reckon it dead and move forward nobody's got that perfectly okay because the, the flesh, it wars against the spirit. But when I look and see so many people claiming this is something Christians do, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, as if it's something we're doing. So if you haven't crucified the flesh, are you really Christ? Mm, that's not, I don't see that. Because if you look at the beginning of the chapter, let me show you. The beginning of the chapter, is telling them stand fast therefore in the liberty where christ has made us free and be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage behold i paul say to you if you be circumcised christ shall profit you nothing for i testify again to every man that circumcised he's a debtor to do the whole law christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever you are justified by the law ye are fallen from grace for we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith with worketh by love. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth, which is that Jesus saved you alone. Okay. And that the law, you don't want to enter a legalistic relationship with God because you're going to fail. Um, because all the obedience in the world doesn't make up for one act of disobedience. Um, so... And then it goes on to say, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why does he mention that? Because they're trying to put him under the bondage of the law. Oh, you just do whatever you want. You just, you know, it's a free gift. I'm just going to sin away. And he's like, no, if you walk in the spirit. You're not going to do that. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You don't need the law. Okay. You have the Holy Spirit. You have God's spirit himself telling you what's right. So. If you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Why? It's not necessary. You're not under a legalistic relationship with him anyway. He's your father, okay? And then it goes on to say, this is what the flesh looks like. It does these things. And this is what the spirit looks like. It does these things. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, right? And then it says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So that's why you don't need a law. Because we know. Our flesh was crucified. We died with Jesus. And if that's the case, why is the dead guy care what, what do we care what the dead guy eats and if he's circumcised or not? He died. He was crucified. Who cares? Right? We're living as the new creature. Even though we're not <laughs> out of this fallen body, we're going to strive. We're going to listen to the spirit and walk this way so i i believe fully that this verse is saying it's a fact they that are christ they've crucified the flesh with the affections and lust thereof it was done just like it says i am crucified with christ did paul do that no it's just what he knew to be the fact that when he trusted jesus he died to his old self all right, that guy died and he had a new purpose and a new life in Jesus. And it was to be conformed in the image of, of God's son. Here, I am crucified with Christ. Did he do that? No. That's just a statement of fact about his position. Romans 6 says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Did Paul do that? No. It's it's a statement of fact that our flesh was crucified and along with that flesh, all the affections and the lust. So we shouldn't let that rule us. It should be 
the spirit that guides us. Uh, so the more condemned you feel, the less victory you'll have, you know, um, anyway, I'm tired. <laughs> it's just been a crazy couple days. Um, but I did want to address this because I just hate seeing saints, um, sad and worried and condemned when God loves them so much, you know, Christ died for us. He got, he died for the, to justify the ungodly. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So when we were God's enemies, he loved us. How much more does he love us now? We're his children. Okay. Condemnation never made anybody live any more godly or love God more. So I hope this will help you know your identity. The old guy died. The one that you're feeling guilty about, he's dead. Okay. Let's go on and live in the purpose that uh, we're supposed to. We're supposed to be like Jesus. Less of me, more of him, right? Okay. God bless you guys. Night.